Why one famous inventor didn't buy into another scientist's theory of relativity picture this, to giants of science, both legends in their own right. One's a brilliant inventor, a wizard of electricity, who brought power to homes and cities. The other's a groundbreaking physicist whose ideas about time, space, and gravity turned the world upside down. Their names are etched in history, but here's the kicker they didn't always see eye to eye. The inventor wasn't shy about throwing shade at the physicist's big idea, the theory of relativity. He called it out, loud and proud, and his skepticism still fuels debates today, with some folks saying, if even he didn't believe it, maybe there's something fishy about it. But was his critique based on hard science, or was it more about gut feelings and a clash of worldviews? Let's break it down in a way that makes sense for folks here in the U.S. Diving into the story Missouri mud with some history, culture, and good O.L. American context to keep it relatable. The heart of the matter, American style imagine you're flipping through channels and land on a History Channel special about the early 1900s. It's a time when America's booming think model T Fords rolling off assembly lines, skyscrapers popping up in New York, and Thomas Edison's light bulbs glowing in homes across the country. Science and tech are the talk of the town, and two big names stand out. One guy's an inventor who's practically a rock star, churning out gadgets that make life easier. The other's a brainy scientist who's scribbling equations that make your head spin, claiming time and space aren't what they seem. Now, the inventor. He's like the Steve Jobs of his day hands-on, building stuff you can touch, like power grids that lit up small-town America. But when he hears about this new theory of relativity saying, crazy things like time can stretch or shrink depending on how fast or moving he's not having it. To him, it sounds like something out of a sci-fi dime novel, not the real world of nuts and bolts. Why'd he push back so hard? Let's unpack it with a mix of history, some down-home reasoning, and a nod to how we Americans think about science, progress, and big ideas. Science in the good O.L. days, a simpler time back around the turn of the 20th century. Science in America was practical, like a trusty pickup truck. You could wrap your head around it. Gravity. Drop an apple. It falls thanks, Isaac Newton. Motion. Push a cart. It moves. This was the physics taught in one-room schoolhouses and early colleges, grounded in everyday life think county fairs where folks marveled at steam engines or the Wright brothers' flying machine. But then, just as America was hitting its stride building railroads and telegraph lines, science started getting weird. By the early 1900s, a new theory came along, saying time isn't the same for everybody. Picture yourself on a train from Chicago to St. Louis, according to this idea. Your watch might tick slower than your buddy's back at the station. Or if you're hauling freight at high speed, your train could shrink a tiny bit. Sounds like something you'd hear at a bar after a few beers, right? To most folks, including our inventor, this was a head-scratcher that didn't jive with common sense. The theory of relativity came into flavors, special, and general. The special ones not to bad high school kids today might even get the basics in AP physics, like how light always moves at the same speed, no matter what. But the general one? That's like trying to read the fine print on a mortgage contract while riding a roller coaster. It dives into hardcore math stuff like tensors and geometry that'd make even a Wall Street quant sweat. For an inventor trained to wire up factories or design motors, this was a whole different ball game. Was the inventor out of his league? Let's talk about our inventor's background, but keep it real. He was a tinkerer, a doer. He studied engineering in Europe, think of it like MIT or Caltech back in the day, but didn't finish his degree. Life got in the way. Maybe a bit of gambling. Who knows? Point is, his schooling was about building bridges or machines, not wrestling with abstract math. In his time, the fancy stuff like tensor calculus was barely a thing more like a nerdy side project for math geeks, not something you'd find in a shop class or a barn raising. By the time this relativity theory hit the scene, our guy was in his 60s, probably set in his ways, like your grandpa, who still swears by his flip phone. He'd spent decades making stuff work think alternating current, the tech that powers your Xbox or AC unit today. His world was practical, like a 4th of July barbecue. You see it, you feel it, it's real. So when he heard about clocks slowing down or rulers shrinking, he likely thought, 
Give me a break, that's not how the world works. Could he have learned the math to get it? Maybe, but it's tough to teach an old dog new tricks. Imagine trying to master quantum computing at retirement age. It's a slog, even for a genius. Plus, he was busy pitching ideas to folks like JP. Morgan or tinkering in his lab, not hitting the books like a grad student. When he finally bumped into the theory, it was probably through newspapers or chats at a gentleman's club, not a deep dive into equations. To him, it felt like a bunch of ivory tower mumbo jumbo, not the nuts and bolts reality he knew. A clash of American dreams, practical versus pie in the sky here's where it gets juicy. The inventor wasn't just saying nope to math he didn't get. He had his own vision, kinda like Elon Musk dreaming up Mars colonies. He was into this old school idea called the ether a sort of invisible cosmic jello that light supposedly traveled through. Back then, plenty of Americans bought into it. It was as legit as Manifest Destiny or the Gold Rush. He even claimed he was cooking up his own theory of gravity based on this ether, talking a big game like a Silicon Valley startup founder before a pitch. Just wait, he'd say. I'm gonna blow your minds. Spoiler, he never dropped the goods. No equations, no papers, just hot air. Compare that to the physicist's theory. It wasn't just talk, it had legs. Scientists ran experiments, like measuring starlight during a solar eclipse in 1919 big news, even in the New York Times. The results backed the theory, showing gravity bends light, just like it said. Over time, it kept racking up winds think GPS in your car or phone, which literally needs relativity to pinpoint your Starbucks run. The inventor's ether idea. It fizzled, like a dot-com bust. So why'd he dig in? Maybe it was pride nobody likes being told their worldview's outdated, whether it's a rancher scoffing at electric cars or a CEO clinging to coal. Or maybe it was the American spirit that can do attitude where you trust your gut over some egghead's chalkboard. He was a self-made man, like a Horatio Alger hero, and admitting he didn't get something might have felt like losing a piece of that. Why it matters to us today now? Let's bring it home. Why should you, chilling in Ohio or surfing in Cali, care about some old science beef. Because it's not just about to dead guys, it's about how we deal with big ideas. The inventor's skepticism reminds me of folks today who side-eye climate models or AI hype. It's human nature to push back when something feels off, especially if it's complex or shakes up what you know. Americans love a good underdog story, and maybe he saw himself as David taking on Goliath's fancy theory. But science isn't about feelings, it's about what holds up. Drop a burger, it hits the deck, whether you believe in gravity or not. Same with relativity. It's been tested to death think atomic clocks on jets or black hole photos splashed across CNN. Every time, it checks out. Sure, it's not perfect physicists are still hunting for a theory to tie it all together, like a unified field goal, but it's the best we've got, like a reliable F-150 in a world of concept cars. History lesson. America and science in the early 20th century to set the stage, let's zoom out. The U.S. in the 1900s was flexing its muscles think Teddy Roosevelt, the Panama Canal, and baseball becoming the national pastime. Science was a point of pride, with guys like Edison and Bella's household names. But theoretical physics? That was more of a European thing, like opera or socialism. Most Americans cared about tech, you could use radios, cars, or fridges not abstract ideas about time bending. Our inventor fit right into this vibe. He was a showman, like P.T. Barnum with a soldering iron, dazzling crowds with electric demos that'd make a Vegas act jealous. His work powered cities, from Chicago's loop to rural towns getting their first streetlights. Meanwhile, the physicists' ideas were like a library book nobody checked out cool for professors, but not putting food on tables. Yet America was changing. By the 1920s, radio shows and magazines like Popular Science were hyping up relativity, especially after that 1919 eclipse experiment. It wasn't just nerds regular folks started buzzing about it, like they would about Lindbergh's flight or Babe Ruth's homers. The inventor, though, stayed old school loyal to ideas from his youth, like a farmer sticking to his trusty plow while tractors rolled in. Economic angle, progress, and paychecks money talks, especially in America. 
The early 1900s were about building wealth think Rockefeller's oil empire, or Carnegie Steel. The inventor's work was a gold mine, driving industries that created jobs and fortunes. His tech was like the internet of its day, rewiring how people lived, from factory workers in Pittsburgh to shopkeepers in Des Moines. Relativity, though, it was a tough sell. In 1915, when the full theory dropped, it wasn't like anyone was cutting checks for it. No startup was pitching time dilation apps to venture capitalists. To a guy like our inventor, whose career was about our OI return on investment this must have seemed like a pipe dream, not a paycheck. Why back a theory with no clear payoff when you could fund a new generator or light up another main street? Fast forward, and the joke's on him. Relativity's now baked into tech we take for granted think satellites keeping your Netflix streaming or air traffic control guiding your flight to Vegas. It's a reminder, today's useless science might be tomorrow's cash cow. Americans love innovation, but we're impatient give us results, not riddles. Philosophical take, the American mindset, let's get deep for a sec. The inventor's pushback wasn't just about math, it was about how we think. Americans are practical, like a diner serving meat and potatoes, not some avant-garde fusion dish. We trust what we can see, touch, or sell. That's why his gadgets clicked with the public they worked, no PhD required. Relativity, though, it asked you to believe in invisible stuff, like a preacher selling salvation. For a guy who built his life on results, just trust me didn't cut it. There's a bigger lesson here, one that hits home in 2025. We're still wrestling with ideas that sound nuts think AI running the world or gene editing babies. Some folks dig in, like he did, saying, show me proof. Others jump in, ready to surf the next wave. It's the tug of war between our pioneer spirit bold, but stubborn and our love for what's next, from moon landings to Tesla cars the company, not the guy. Modern spin, where we stand now today. Relativities as American as apple pie at least in science labs. It's been vetted more than a presidential candidate. Experiments with lasers, spacecraft, even colliding neutron stars yep, that 2017 Nobel Prize news. GPS, which guides your road trip to Yellowstone, tweaks its clocks using relativity's rules. Without it, you'd be lost in the boonies. Still, the inventor's ghost lingers. Online forums think Reddit or X love quoting his doubts, like conspiracy buffs hyping Area 51. But science doesn't care about clout. His inventions changed lives, no question your microwaves humming thanks to him. But on relativity, he swung and missed. It's like betting on VHS over streaming. Great hustle, wrong call. Wrapping it up, a story for today's America this clash isn't just ancient history, it's a mirror for us. The inventor's grit, his proved vibe, is pure red, white, and blue. We're a nation of builders, from Barnes to Bezos' empire, and we don't trust what we can't kick the tires on. But his story's also a nudge, don't let pride or habit blind you. Science moves fast, like a SpaceX rocket, and today's wild idea's quantum internet, anyone, might be tomorrow's reality. So next time you're scrolling X or arguing at a tailgate, think about this, being skeptical's fine, it's American as a bald eagle. Just keep an open mind. The universe doesn't care if you believe it, it just keeps ticking, sometimes slower than you think.